And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Man in a Corner. It began with little things, didn't it, Ben? Yes, little bits of conversation that were cut short, abruptly changed whenever you appeared. Telephone calls that made you think of the old joke, if a man answers, hang up. Only it isn't any joke, is it, Ben? Not when you find yourself in a corner, wondering about your beautiful, beautiful wife, Lydia, and your business partner, Frank Paris. The big trouble is they've been so clever about it. You're forced to wonder whether there really is anything between them or whether it's all a mistake, a product of your own overactive imagination. Because outwardly, they've given you no sure sign, no conclusive evidence. And at an informal get-together at your home in Malibu, Frank's actions are as natural and casual as a friend and business partner should be. While Lydia conducts herself with a calm and reserve that leave you completely confused, your friends also enjoy her company. Look upon her as the perfect wife, and upon you as... Luckiest man in the world, that's what you are, Vance. <laughs> I guess I am pretty lucky at that. I've been telling him that for years, ever since we've been in business together. I envy you, Vance. Well, I like that. Lydia may be my dearest friend, but I don't exactly crack a whip over you, Jim Benton. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly, Ruth, but... Oh, now, Benton, I... wait a minute. This is becoming embarrassing. It odd. For my money, you boys are both lucky. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see why I picked Frank as a business partner? He's not only smart, he's a diplomat, too. <laughs> oh, not smart enough to find me a wife like Ruth or Lydia. You see what I mean? Diplomat. Please. <laughs> this conversation's getting too serious. Besides, I'll admit I'm a lucky woman to have Vance. Now, you see, why don't I get answers like that? <laughs> because it's time to go home. And if I start treating you too perfectly, you'll want to stay for one for the road. Oh, no, well, sure. <laughs> Get coat, Vance. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it's still early. Oh, seriously, Jim's got an important meeting in the morning. We wouldn't have come at all except that, well, who turns down Vance and Lydia Lawrence? Why, sure, most wonderful little couple in the world. Successful, beautiful... Put your coat uh, on. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, pay no attention to me. Failure, ugly... <laughs> oh, Jim, bad you're a darling. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, good night, you two, and thanks. Good night, Ruth. Good night, Ruth. Good night, Jim. Good night, Jim. I'm going to run, too. Good night, Lydia. Good night, Frank. I'll see you at the office in the morning, Vance. Right, Frank. Good night. Nice couple, the Bentons. Todd. Lydia. Yes? Are we that perfect couple they spoke about? Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. I... Skip it, huh? I think so. I'm tired, dear. Do you mind if no, I... No, no. Go ahead. Um, I think I'll go out for a breath of air. Hmm. Good night. Good night. It's there and it isn't. You wonder what to do about it, don't you, Vance? How to make sure, how to satisfy in your own mind what it's all about, if it's about anything at all. Walking along the beach alone, with only the roar of the surf for company, you get an idea. And the next time Lydia is in town, away from the beach house, you begin to carry out your plan. 
Uh, where do you want the extension phone, Mr. Lawrence? Here in the workshop? Yes. It's been a terrible inconvenience running up into the house every time I get a call. It seems like people always want you just when you're getting started at something. Seems so, all right. This workshop doesn't look as if you use it much, though. Oh, um... No, I haven't lately. But I'll be getting going on my hobby again. Things are easing up at the office. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wish I could say the same. Uh, right here on the workbench, okay for the phone, Mr. Lawrence? Uh, no, it'll be in the way... Perhaps inside one of these cabinets. Anywhere you say. Now, just how does this work? I won't get a ring down here, will I? No, uh, not if we hook a cutout switch on this phone. You'll hear it on the phone in the living room anyway, and you can just pick it up here. Fine. It'll be handy for you, all right. Oh, yes. It's going to be very handy. out again, Van? These nightly strolls seem to be becoming a habit. I won't be long, Lydia. About 12 minutes. You've almost hit a schedule. Really? Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware. I guess that's about how long it does take me. I always walk down to the inlet and back. <sighs> well, uh, suit yourself. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Strange that she'd know exactly how long you take each night, isn't it, Van? Because so far, you haven't caught anything out of line. No call from Frank since you had the extension put in. You're certain Lydia doesn't suspect that you've been in your workshop these past four nights instead of uh, out walking. Yes, in the workshop, waiting, listening for her to get a call. Four nights and no luck. Or maybe you're in luck, Van. Perhaps you've been entirely wrong about Frank and Lydia. You stare at the phone, wonder if it will ever ring, if Frank will ever call. And then it hits you. Perhaps he won't have to call Lydia. Yes, Ben. Now that Lydia thinks you're safely out of the house, she might call him. Your hand jerks out compulsively to the phone. Then quietly you lift the receiver. And I just this minute remember the party, darling. I'm terribly sorry. We wondered what happened to you. I'm sure I'm not flattered that you just forgot about well, it. It's shameless. I know, Ruth. Actually, Vance seemed a little tired when he got home from the office this evening, and well, I guess my concern over him just about pushed everything else from my mind. Oh, he isn't ill, I hope. Virus or anything, Lydia? Oh, no, it isn't anything like that, I'm sure. In fact, right now he's taking his constitutional, walking along the beach. And you're not with him? I didn't think you two could stand to be separated even that long. <laughs> I, I permit him a few minutes to himself every once in a while. How's the party going? It sounds gay enough. It's taking on form. Oh, I am sorry you couldn't make it. I am too, really. And do please forgive me for not calling sooner. I don't quite understand it myself, but I want you to. Of course I do, Lydia. We'll make it another time, hmm? Soon, I hope, Ruth. My best advance. Thank you, dear. Well, good night. Good night. You're embarrassed, aren't you, Van? Almost ashamed that you eavesdropped on an innocent conversation between Lydia and Ruth Benton. And you wonder again if you just imagined that a romantic attachment existed between your business partner, Frank, and your wife, Lydia. You think about it through the next day. Can't get the idea out of your mind. So once again, the following night, you leave Lydia for your nightly uh, walk along the beach and take up your vigil instead by the extension phone in your workshop. You haven't been there long when... There it is. Lydia? Lydia? Yes, Frank? Well, funny, I could have sworn... You alone? Mm. He's out walking on the beach. I told you it'd be safe. I'll just hang up if he comes back. What have you found out? I uh, still haven't got anything we could use on him. I've gone over all our back records, tax statements, everything. No way you can find out about that deal in Miami. I know it was questionable. Yes, but unfortunately, he pulled that one before we became partners. Mm. If I could dig up something conclusive on that, uh, you could tell him you're through, and I could tell him that his share of the business is mine, or... Or he'd go to jail. Chet? Frank, how long do we have to wait like this? Oh, Lydia, I'm as impatient as you are. I hate Vance every bit as much, but if we've nothing to nail... Well, on... maybe I could help. He pulled other crooked deals, too. Yeah, but all before I was in business with him. There's got to be proof, Lydia. 
We'll come out of this with nothing if we can't really threaten him. Nothing but... but each other. Yeah, but, uh, I know, I know, Lydia. I don't like this way. But... You're right, Frank. We must be practical. We should have many years together. We both like money. But let's not wait too long. Well, just long enough to get what we want. What we need. Mm -hmm. Evidence that'll force Vance to give you your freedom and me. Well, sole ownership of the business. You're cruel, darling. Well, but you know, from you, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Lydia. I won't call like this anymore. It's too risky. I hope you won't have to. Very long, darling. So do I. Goodbye. Bye. You're right, both of you. It is going to be goodbye. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. Engine wear. It's one of the principal reasons drivers have to spend big sums of money having their motors overhauled. Engine wear. It's one of the principal reasons motors lose pep and power, get fewer miles per gallon of gas. Engine wear. It's one of the principal reasons cars gradually use more and more oil until eventually they become oil eaters. No wonder automotive and petroleum engineers for years have sought ways to reduce engine wear. And now at last, Signal reports startling success with an amazing new motor oil that reduces by 50% engine wear due to lubrication. That means your car can now keep its like new pep and power twice as long. It means you can now enjoy low oil consumption twice as long if your car isn't already an oil eater. So if you want to be good to your car and your pocketbook too, drain out that lazy old motor oil. Have a signal dealer refill your crankcase this week with Signal Premium the amazing new signal oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication, 50%. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. terrible corner, aren't you? The phone extension you had installed has served its purpose. You finally discover the truth about your wife, Lydia, and your partner, Frank Paris. And it's even worse than you'd imagine. Frank suspects about some of your past shady dealings, particularly one in Miami, Florida. If he can learn the facts, he'll be able to take more than Lydia away from you, won't he? Yes. He'll be able to force you to sign over your share of your mutual holdings. Only he hasn't any facts. And if you move fast enough, he'll never uncover them. Walking along the ocean front that very same evening, you get another inspiration. This one from a chance conversation with Lieutenant Matt Engel of the Sheriff's Squad. Hey. Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, it's you, Mr. Lawrence. What's the trouble? Sorry, Mr. Lawrence. We've just been edgy lately. You know, since that killer's been reported seen in the beach area... Killer? Seen around here? Mm. Oh, it seems like I did read something about it. <laughs> you didn't think that I... No harm in checking. Say, how have you been? Fine. Fine, Lieutenant. Uh, busy, you know, but... <laughs> um, Lieutenant, you don't suppose there's anything to this report? Oh, could be. I didn't mean to worry you, though. I was thinking about my wife. Really, I shouldn't leave her alone in the house. Well, no, it isn't the best idea. And I've got to run up to San Francisco soon. I wouldn't want to think... Now, look, we patrol pretty carefully, you know. Oh, I know you do. But if anything happened to her... I'm sorry I even brought it up, Mr. Lawrence. Gosh, I've heard how you folks feel about each other, but... Then... This prowler. If you hear any more, you'll let me know, won't you? Certainly. I appreciate your concern. But you can count on us. The boys are careful. Oh, I'm sure of it, Lieutenant. I know I can count on you. You've put my mind at ease already. It's done, isn't it, Vance? 
you've made the lieutenant well aware of your concern about the danger which lurks close by. And now you're ready for the next step. The very next night, you arrange for your partner, Frank Paris, to stop by the house at Malibu for cocktails and small talk. Talk which they believe they're carrying off very well. Oh, it's a wonderful story, Frank, really. Well, so I... help me, it's true that they tell me it sent old man Simpson back $5,000. Five thousand? Oh, no, Frank, come, come. Oh, true. Really, that so help me. You mean to tell me a man like Simpson would fall for an old gag like that? Good heavens, that Spanish prisoner routine is as old as the con game itself. Could be, but, but apparently it all sounded brand new to Simpson. Hmm. Huh. And I thought he was one of the smart men in town. Well, it just goes to show, Vance, that sometimes the smarter they are, the easier they're fooled, huh? Hmm. I don't know, Frank. I don't know about that. Um, darling, we're running out of martinis. What? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me. As Lydia and Frank go on chatting, you stroll back to the kitchen. Then quickly you slip out into the hall, hurry to the closet. You find what you're looking for in the pocket of Frank's overcoat. Yes, one of his gloves. Exhibit A, Vance. A few minutes later, you're back in the living room with more cocktails, sipping your drink. And then an idea occurs to you as Frank opens his cigarette case, offers it to Lydia. Oh, uh... Thank you, Frank. Uh, yeah. Now, as I was saying, this cocky chap turns to the sailor and... Uh, uh, may I? What? One of your cigarettes, Frank. I've heard so much about that special brand of yours. You smoking a cigarette, Vance? I just thought I'd like to try one, that's all. Well, of course. Here you are, old man. Thanks. Uh, go on with your story, Frank. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, this cocky chap wheels around and faces the sailor. Here, here, my lad, he says. Now, what I'm going to say... You light the cigarette, take a few puffs, and leave it in the ashtray. Exhibit B, Vance. The evidence against Frank Paris is building, isn't it? And there's more. Yes, the glass he holds in his hand. The cocktail glass with his fingerprints on it. You'll want that too, won't you, Vance? After Frank leaves, you go to your workshop, open a cabinet, look at the evidence it contains. Evidence against your partner, Frank Parrott. A half-smoked cigarette, his special brand, Vance. And a glove, his glove. And a cocktail glass with his fingerprints on it. Yes, it's all the evidence you'll need, isn't it? You close the cabinet and lock it. Now you're ready for the next step, the next move. You make it the following day with a call to the airline's office. And then late the same afternoon, you hurry back to the house. You're in the bedroom when you hear the front door close. And shortly after that, Lydia makes her appearance. Why, darling, you're home early. I... Oh, packing? Yes, I've got to run up to San Francisco. Oh. Got a call a while ago on the Clark account. I think I can save it if I see Clark personally. Uh, phone Frank and tell him, will you? Oh, sure. My plane leaves in 45 minutes. Drive me out. Of course. Um, how long will you be gone? Oh, several days going to miss me? Dreadfully. <laughs> oh, but I will, darling. Of course, Lydia. Of course. You board the plane at Burbank on schedule, and then you're airborne, arriving at the San Francisco airport a few minutes before six. There, you immediately arrange for a reservation aboard the eight o'clock plane back to Los Angeles, then ride into town and register at the Willows Hotel. I'll have the boy take your bags up, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. Oh, I want to leave a call for the morning, 10 o'clock. Very well, sir. I don't want to be disturbed until then. Yes, sir. You wait in your room a few minutes, then slip downstairs, hurry across the lobby unseen by the desk clerk, take a taxi back to the airport. You board the 8 o'clock plane, and you're on your way back to Los Angeles. You take a taxi to a restaurant about two miles from your house at Malibu. Pay the driver and watch till he drives out of sight. Then you walk to your house. It's tedious, but it's safer, isn't it, Vance? As you approach the house, you see a light burning in the living room. Lydia is home, isn't she, Vance? As you knew she would be. 
you slip into the house through the workshop. I've tried to reach you since early evening, Frank. I wondered if you'd call. Oh, I had business with a client in Pasadena today. Ended up by letting him buy my dinner tonight. Mm. But uh, what's the idea of calling me all evening, Lydia? Isn't that a little risky? Not when Vance is in San Francisco, darling. What? San Francisco? When? Why? <laughs> he left on the late afternoon plane. He... What? Funny he didn't talk it over with me. Are you sure? Well, of course I am, Frank. I drove him out to the airport myself. So I saw him get aboard the plane, even stayed to wave him out of sight. What's well, strange. This isn't quite the reaction I expected you to have, darling. Oh, 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 what do you mean? Well, aren't you coming over? Oh, well, sure. Sure I am, of course. I'll be there in about half an hour. Hmm, that's better. And do stop worrying, hmm? I told you Vance is in San Francisco. Okay, okay, but it still seems funny he didn't talk it over with me. Well, apparently it came suddenly a call from some client up there. I can't remember the name. He said you weren't at the office. Oh, that's right. I, I was in Pasadena most of the afternoon. Well, then he couldn't have talked to you. You've heard enough, haven't you, Vance? The time has come. You hurry quietly to the living room. Wait outside Bye the door right. until I'm Lydia's right. completed her call. Right. Then you step into the room. Vance! Surprised, Lydia? What are you doing here? I, I thought that you... It's all a trick, wasn't it? You've known all along. You've heard everything I said. Yes. I've known for some time, Lydia. All right. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to kill you, Lydia. Vance, don't be a fool. I have been a fool, Lydia. No. Vance, no. It's all over very quickly, isn't it, Vance? Lydia is dead, and now you've got to move carefully. Arrange everything just as you planned it to throw suspicion on your partner, Frank Paris. The sound of the front doorbell startles you, doesn't it, Vance? You wonder who could be. Certainly not Frank. He couldn't have arrived this soon. You move down the hall to the front door and listen. Oh, ring again, sweetheart. They must be home. There's a light out in the living room. Well, they could have gone off. Forgot Oh, that. go on, go on. Re buzz the buzzer. You recognize the voices, don't you, Vance? Yes, the Benton, friends of Lydia. They would have to pick this night to come calling. Maybe they went down to the grotto for dinner, huh? Vance usually likes to eat out on Fridays. Well, I hadn't thought of that. I suppose we could go down there. Well, let's see. No, it's almost 10 o'clock. We should be back soon. Well, let's wait a while. Oh, okay. But let's wait in the car, huh? It's cold out here. <laughs> All right. Come on. You step to the side window and watch the Bentons get back into their car parked in the driveway. You stand in the darkened hallway and wait. Five minutes. Ten. And then finally... They've gone, Vance. You hurry downstairs to the workshop, unlock the cabinet, remove the cocktail glass, the cigarette, and the glove. Back in the living room, you push the glove in between the sofa pillows, drop the cigarette into an ashtray, and place the glass on the end table. Then you proceed to disarrange the furniture, evidence of a struggle. That's important too, isn't it, Vance? It takes you some time to set the scene perfectly. Finally, you're satisfied. <laughs> That should do it, Lydia. That should take care of your darling Frank very well. Very well indeed. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. Is engine wear causing your expensive motor to wear out twice as fast as necessary? It is if you're still using lazy motor oils that merely lubricate. Here's what I mean. In amazing new Signal Premium Motor Oil, special properties are engineered into the oil through the marvels of modern chemistry. As a result, new Signal Premium not only reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%, but also protects your motor in all these important extra ways. One, keeps oil rings clean and free. Two, controls and reduces harmful engine deposits, such as carbon, gum, and varnish. Three, prevents sticking of hydraulic valve lifters. Four, stops acid corrosion and rust. Best of all, new Signal Premium Motor Oil 
gives you all this extra protection at no increase in price. Good reason to get your next oil change at a signal service station. Change this week to the amazing new signal oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication, 50%. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. It's perfect, isn't it, Vance? Yes, you've carefully set the scene to trap your partner, Frank Paris, for the murder of your wife. Now all you have to do is catch a plane back to San Francisco, slip back into your hotel. You look over the living room once more to make certain that everything is just as you want it to be. And as you do, an idea occurs to you. The cocktail glass, Vance. It certainly would have been knocked over in the struggle. You place it carefully on the floor near your wife's body. Turn the end table over on its side. Then as you step back... Hello, Mr. Lawrence. Well, Lieutenant. Thought you were in San Francisco. Well, I... I, I was. I... Well, you, you see, Lieutenant... Save your breath, Mr. Lawrence. I've been watching you for the past five minutes. Quite a little scene setter, aren't you? Look, if you'll let me explain... Like I, I said, save it for your lawyer. He'd better be a good one. What are you doing here? Why did you come? Just keeping an eye on things. You wanted me to, remember? You were so concerned about your wife's safety. When I learned you were in San Francisco, I decided I'd stop by and make sure everything was okay. I called her on the phone a little while ago, but the line was busy. You called? Yeah, several times. But the line was busy so long, I thought I'd better come out and investigate. Incidentally, I came into the house through your workshop. And I found out why I couldn't get through on the phone. Well, what do you mean? That extension phone you have in your workshop, Vance. Someone left it off the hook. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you that you get the most pleasure out of driving when you drive at sensible speeds, observe traffic regulations, and don't take chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Les Tremaine, Betty Lou Gerson, Elizabeth Ruth, High Averback, Larry Dobkin, and Herbert Litton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Whistler will tell you how the strange things a young boy sees on his first train trip alone help solve a murder. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>